Carlos Sainz denies big rumors about his potential future team. Lewis Hamilton gives his opinion on Adrian Newey's exit from Red Bull, and Max Verstappen is not worried about Red Bull's performance after losing Adrian. Let's get straight into the latest F1 news. Lewis Hamilton dismissed the idea that Red Bull's performance would suffer following Adrian Newey's departure, emphasizing that he leaves behind a capable design team. Red Bull recently announced that Newey, the renowned design expert responsible for Red Bull's success in the ground effect aerodynamic era of Formula One, will officially leave the team at the end of the first quarter in 2025. In the meantime, Newey will primarily focus on the RB17 hypercar project, concluding his direct involvement in Formula One, except for attending a few races. Hamilton refuted any concerns that Newey's departure would weaken Red Bull's design team, emphasizing that it is not a one-person endeavor. It's important to remember that there are numerous individuals working behind the scenes. It's not solely dependent on one person, stated the seven-time world champion, who narrowly missed out on the 2021 driver's title to Max Verstappen in a newly designed RB16B. Conveying his confidence, Hamilton continued, It's a collective effort by an entire team of people who contribute to the job. Despite the invaluable experience Newey brings to the team, the people he collaborates with will continue to excel. I fully expect Red Bull to keep producing exceptional cars moving forward. Even in the future, Newey's expertise will have an impact on Red Bull's F1 cars. The sport is anticipated to maintain ground-effect aerodynamics, including in the forthcoming generation of cars planned for 2026. Hamilton shared his first-hand experience, having driven a McLaren in 2007 that evolved from one of Newey's earlier designs. Reflecting on it, he remarked, when I joined McLaren, I believe it was a progression from one of his cars. I arrived after he had moved on, so that car had evolved from a concept he had developed. I felt privileged to have had the opportunity to interact with something he had worked on. He further added, Competing against a team Nui has been heavily involved with throughout the years has posed a significant challenge. Sergio Perez, speaking to the media shortly after the announcement about Nui, praised the design department that the British engineer leaves behind. While it's not ideal to see someone like Adrian leave, he has made an immense contribution to our team and organization, Perez acknowledged. He continued, Red Bull is in an excellent position, boasting a highly capable and strong organization featuring Pierre Wachet as technical director, Enrico Balbo as aerodynamics chief, and Ben Waterhouse leading performance engineering. The entire aerodynamics group is formidable, and we are eagerly anticipating the future. Perez confidently stated, as history has shown us with these prominent teams and individuals departing, the team consistently thrives. It's not solely reliant on one person. Rather, it's an entire organization. Christian Horner, as team principal, has done an exceptional job of preparing Red Bull for the upcoming generation and the challenges that lie ahead. Earlier this week, it was confirmed that Newey will depart from Red Bull after 19 years with the team in Milton Keynes. Throughout his tenure, he made significant contributions to the team's consecutive championship victories with Sebastian Vettel and now with Verstappen. This news has dealt a heavy blow to Red Bull, particularly if it results in Newey joining a competing team, considering Ferrari's expressed interest. However, Verstappen expressed appreciation for Newey's contributions and expressed a wish that the 65-year-old designer would have remained with Red Bull. Nevertheless, he doesn't view the potential loss of their iconic design genius as a major disaster. Verstappen highlighted how Newey's role has evolved over time and that many people fail to grasp the full extent of his involvement. Although Verstappen acknowledged the importance of Newey's experience and the personal connection they share, he expressed confidence in the strength of the technical team beyond Adrian. Verstappen emphasized that despite the external appearance of drama, those familiar with the inner workings of the team understand that it is not as dire as it may seem. He held the belief that persuading Nui to stay on a personal level would be pointless, and he doesn't hold any grudges if Nui seeks a new challenge. Verstappen emphasized that in the world of Formula One, individuals prioritize their own interests, and he fully understands that. While he admitted a preference for Nui to remain due to his personality and knowledge, he also acknowledged the potential benefits Nui could bring to another team. Ultimately, Verstappen expressed trust in the abilities of the current team members, acknowledging their tremendous skill and expertise in their respective roles. The merch giveaway is still on. To participate, please subscribe to the channel. If we manage to reach 1,000 subscribers by the Miami Grand Prix race, I will be selecting 10 lucky subscribers to receive merch.
Thank you for your support. Carlos Sainz has dismissed a rumor that he declined an offer from Audi and took a gamble on being called up by Red Bull or Mercedes. According to him, there is no truth to that claim. Even before Ferrari announced that they would not be renewing his contract, Sainz had been frequently linked to Audi. However, instead of signing Sainz, Audi has announced that Nico Hülkenberg will join them for the 2025 season. Spanish journalist Antonio Lobato suggested that Sainz had rejected Audi's offer in the hopes of securing a race seat with either Red Bull or Mercedes. Lobato wrote, He decided not to accept the offer and missed the deadline he had to respond. Accepting it would have provided him with peace of mind, along with a lucrative financial offer. But he chose to take the risk in search of a place in a more competitive team. Lobato specifically mentioned Red Bull and Mercedes as the desired teams. However, Sainz denies these claims. In Miami, he told the media, No, that's incorrect. There's no truth to it. As I've mentioned before, some things are not entirely under my control, and we will need to wait. But it doesn't mean we're at a complete standstill. We are still in talks with people and making progress in whatever way we can. However, these things do involve waiting for people to make decisions in various areas. While science waits for other factors to unfold, there have been suggestions that Audi might consider pursuing another driver instead of signing the three-time Grand Prix winner. When asked if he had received any reassurances from Audi about their willingness to wait, Sainz replied, No, the only assurance I have is from myself, the assurance that I want to make the right decision. That's why it's taking a bit longer, and I want to explore all available options before making any decisive move. I think Nico joining Audi makes perfect sense for both parties. He is a fantastic driver, and I have witnessed his talent. He will be a great addition to Audi, and I congratulate them because he has been performing remarkably well at Haas. Signs emphasize that his decision to wait is not because he lacks faith in Audi. He believes that they are a company with a proven track record of success, even noting how his father, Carlos Sainz, has experienced victory with Audi in the Dakar rally. When it comes to Audi, you will always hear my dad speaking highly of them, their project and his confidence that Audi will excel in Formula One, Sainz remarked. If you follow Volkswagen's ventures in motorsports, be it with Porsche, Audi, or any brand under the Volkswagen group, they have consistently emerged victorious. That is a significant asset and an important factor to consider. However, there are many other elements involved in my decision-making process. I genuinely hope that Audi can compete for victories in the future, as it would mean having one more competitive car on the grid from such a prestigious brand. I wish them the best, although I haven't determined whether that possibility aligns with my own future. Aston Martin has submitted a request for a review of the 10-second time penalty and three-point deduction that was imposed on Alonso's racing license following a collision he had with Carlos Sainz during the Chinese Grand Prix sprint. There will be a stewards meeting scheduled for 8 a.m. in Miami on Friday to assess whether Aston Martin has presented sufficient new evidence that is both significant and relevant enough to warrant a fresh hearing on the matter. Before the Miami GP, Alonso chose not to delve too deeply into the details of the case, but he mentioned that there are important answers that Aston Martin is seeking. In particular, Alonso wants clarification on why he seems to have been singled out and treated so severely for incidents in recent races. This includes the penalty he received for his defensive driving against George Russell on the final lap of the Australian GP, which ultimately led to a crash. Alonso acknowledged that differing opinions are commonplace in any sport, comparing it to watching football on TV where people interpret fouls differently depending on the team they support. He believed that, in China, the majority of people enjoyed the sprint event and the racing battles, and yet he received the harshest penalty of the race. He found it a bit confusing but expressed curiosity about what would unfold the next day. Given that penalties have been imposed on Alonso in both Australia and China, he emphasized the significance of obtaining some explanations regarding the decision-making process. While Alonso acknowledged that rules are rules and must be accepted, he highlighted the importance of understanding why certain decisions were made. He recognized that the stewards possess the authority and expertise to make those decisions based on their understanding of the rules. However, he reiterated that he received the severest penalty during the past two events in Australia and China. Therefore, he emphasized the need to ensure that everything is in order and that there are no other underlying factors involved.